let's talk about guitar technique today. Did you know that there are actually certain technique mistakes and bad habits that can prevent you from making progress? It's as cruel as it gets. You put in the work, you practice all the right exercises, you're dedicated and disciplined, but the way that you're actually playing guitar is holding you back and you feel like you're not making any real progress. One of these exact mistakes and bad habits that I barely see players talk about actually concerns the fretting hand. And no, it's not the flying pinky finger or bad legato technique. It's about how you actually move and especially feel your fingers as you're playing and practicing each day. I wish I discovered this much sooner as it really stood in the way of making faster progress for a long time. But I hope I can at least save you from tons of wasted practice hours with today's video. Let's do this! Spoiler alert, I added our brand new Patreon Shred Collar video at the end of this lesson, so make sure to stay until it starts. You will be amazed for sure, there are some incredible entries in this one. And of course, I will also let you know how you can be in the next Collar video on this channel. So if you're subscribed to the channel and part of our community for a while now, you're familiar with the fretting hand technique basics. <laughs> For technically challenging material like that, you want your thumb behind your fingers to support them, most of the time in the area behind your middle finger. You definitely want to avoid flat fingers like this in favor for curled fingers like that to get that nice snapping motion for your hammer-ons and pull-offs. And of course you want to avoid those flying fingers, especially the flying pinky finger when you're playing, when your fingers are really bending away from the fretboard. That can cause tons of unwanted noise as you're playing and of course it's also harder to speed up a big motion like this. We talked about this already and I showed you some really helpful exercises for every single topic that I just mentioned. In case you missed all of that, you know what to do right now to stay updated. Clicking on that little red button right now really helps if you're serious about improving your guitar skills every single week. But here's what today's video is about. All of this actually won't help you out too much if you can't feel and control every single finger individually as you're playing. This might sound a bit weird at first, of course you can feel each finger when you touch them, but the more I personally struggled with my technique, the more I realized that I couldn't really control or feel my fingers individually while I was playing, especially as soon as things got faster. I'm quite sure that you're familiar with the feeling of having stronger and weaker fingers. I'm looking at you, pinky finger. And sometimes you feel like you can't really move your ring finger without also moving your middle finger and pinky finger. Just put all your fingers on the table right now and try to do this. It's really not as easy as it looks and you will immediately see what I mean. Short summary, this really holds you back on your guitar journey and you need to get this under control as fast as possible. So let's go through the three steps and exercises that will help you with solving those finger problems. Trust me, when you work on this, you will sound and feel completely different when you're playing. Free, controlled and relaxed. And this was honestly some pretty life-changing stuff for me. So the first bad habit that might hold you back right now is pressing down really hard with your index finger when you actually don't need to. I've also seen this exact mistake with the beginner lesson I gave on the channel recently. For some reason it feels like we're all programmed not to only leave the index finger on the fretboard as we're playing with the other fingers, but also to press down really hard to anchor the fretting hand. Of course this often prevents you from really feeling and controlling what the other fingers are doing and this can be especially problematic with your hammer-ons and pull-offs. <laughs> With this line I was paying close attention to slightly lift my index finger as soon as I don't needed it anymore instead of really pressing down on every single fret and this instantly gave me much more control and independence with my other fingers. I will try it again right now really pressing down with my index finger. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it gets pretty messy because I also start to grip the neck much harder and I can't really feel what my other fingers are doing and the motion gets a lot bigger. So when you're paying close attention to your fingers while you're playing and you're lifting the index finger just a little bit with legato phrases like this, you simply strengthen your weaker fingers since they have to work on their own and this makes a huge difference with your fretting hand technique in general. But how can you actively train your fingers to work this way in your practice routine? Great news, I have the perfect exercise that will train your index finger not to do this all the time. This one will help you out a lot with developing finger independence, control and also economy of motion.
So this practice concept is something I mentioned in my most recent online course I made especially for my Patreon community. As you could see, it's all about including open strings in your finger workouts. This obviously forces you to lift each finger before you're using the next finger. And this means that your index finger can't remain on the fretboard and really press down like this. This actually feels quite crazy when you do it for the first time, especially if you're not used to controlling and using your fingers individually. I personally got the best results with this exercise so far when I wasn't rocking my wrist back and forth to assist my fingers. My biggest focus with this is really just using my fingers and training them individually like this. So I really don't want to use my wrist to kind of help out like that. I want to focus on only using my fingers right here. By the way, before I show you the next even more powerful workouts, I made some really awesome practice files just for you on Patreon once again. PDF tabs, backing tracks and guitar profiles. And with the additional videos I made for you, you can practice this together with me. And I also made a full daily five minute finger workout video for you. Believe me, those five minutes each day will make a huge difference with your playing if you're consistent with this. The second issue and bad habit that might hold you back right now is always working with the same finger combinations and never exploring more creative patterns. So the following exercise is extremely important for you in case you feel like you're playing the same old boring licks all the time. Here's an example lick with a twist. This one serves as a great exercise. If you play this just once, you will immediately know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe you've seen it already, the twist right here is that the index finger isn't really playing a prominent role in the lick at all. And you also can't leave it anchored on the low E string because you're hopping between different strings. So your other fingers have to learn to work really hard without the support of your anchored index finger. And this probably feels pretty crazy when you do it for the first time, since you're probably used to the index finger having a very prominent role in your licks. But if you're always playing like that and if you're always anchoring with your index finger, you will feel quite limited with your phrasing ideas, especially when you're improvising and that's not good. You won't believe the exciting lines you're suddenly creating when you're not always anchoring your index finger for those more basic patterns. The third and final issue and experiment I want to discuss with you today concerns the death grip of doom. That's a pretty epic name, right? So this is all about your fretting hand grip. And as you might guess, it concerns the intensity of your grip when you're playing. This is also something that held me back so much because I was gripping the neck really, really hard when I started playing, especially when I played my first live shows, because I was always afraid that certain notes might not ring if I'm not gripping hard enough. And that's exactly what I like to call the death grip of doom today. You will be really surprised when you test the following exercise with a twist once again. This one is all about reducing pressure with your fretting hand grip, and it's actually a very of today's first workout. So far so good, you're probably familiar with chromatic workouts like that. But the twist right here is that I want you to play it while focusing on relaxing your fretting hand as much as possible. Just experiment with the intensity and really test out how light your grip can actually be before the notes die. I promise you, if you're like me, you will be very surprised by how light you can actually grip the neck before the notes don't ring out anymore. Even with guitars that are set up with higher action, you don't have to grip your neck like this all the time. So once again, this is the practice twist with the final workout. You want to experiment with gradually decreasing the intensity of your grip until you reach the point where the notes die because you're not pressing hard enough. Try to find your personal sweet spot in between the death grip of doom and the grip that's too light and aim to use it from now on. You will sound much more relaxed and in control. All right, my friends, in the end, don't forget to download all your practice files on Patreon right now to get your fingers under control once and for all. The daily five minute finger workout video I made especially for you will help out a lot with that. And also make sure to check right now if you're finally subscribed, that way you won't miss the next videos I'm posting. So now that we reach the end of this video, let's check out the awesome Patreon shred collab that we worked on together. I'm honestly really, really proud of every single contributor. It turned out amazing. You all truly did an awesome job and I can't wait to work on the next project together with all of you. So if you want to be in the next collab video on this channel, make sure to join the Patreon VIP club or the Platinum membership in case you want to support the channel. That way you always have access to all the files you need in our secret Inner Circle Facebook group and you will be part of the next Shred collab video we're putting together. But for now, let's shred. Mm -hmm.